will uh, continue on the course on uh, biostatistics and design of experiments. Um, so, as I mentioned in this course, I am going to talk about biostatistics, that is the part 1 of the whole thing and then comes the design of experiments. In biostatistics, we are going to look at large number of distributions like um, a binomial distribution, um, Poisson distribution, Weibull distribution, T distribution, Z distribution, uh, normal distribution uh, and so on. Then uh, we are going to look at something called confidence interval, test for normality, test of significance, different types of test, T test, F test, ANOVA test and under T test you have one sample T test, two sample T test and then we are also going to look at chi square test or chi square distribution. Then we are going to look at non-parametric tests, another type of tests that are possible in biostatistics which does not uh, uh, need to have a normal distribution. Then under design of experiments, we are going to look at one factor at a time. How do I change one factor? Like uh, if I am changing temperature alone, then after I finish temperature optimization, I go to pH alone. So that is called one factor at a time. And then go into a design, full factorial design where I am changing many factors simultaneously. Then there is something called fractional factorial design where you are doing a fraction of the full factorial design that means you are cutting down on the experiments. Then we are going to talk about uh, what is this confounding and alias and how does confounding affect when you start doing the design of experiment. Then there is something called screening designs and uh, that is initially you start uh, looking at a large number of parameters and carry out experiments that is called screening designs. Then you come to second order designs that means uh, non uh, linear type of designs. Um, then once you collect uh, the data from the design, you do a regression analysis, mathematical modeling, then finally you go into data, data reduction. That is the second part of the um, course. The first part is biostatistics, second part is design of experiments. Okay, let us get into um, and before that these are some of the books which may be very useful for you. Um, biostatistics and introductory text uh, but by Goldstein, then we have Barlow a guide to the use of statistical methods. Then this Fisher and AIDS, this is a very, very good book which gives a lot of statistical tables because as you go along you will come across a lot of tables, T tables, F tables, random numbers, uh, odds ratios, um, confidence intervals, p values and so on. So, no, for all these you need to have some tables and this one gives you. Of course, you can get uh, the tables online also, but they are all based on this particular book called Fisher and Yates, they have developed statistical tables for biological, agricultural and medical research. Okay. Let us look at data types. There are two types of uh, data, one is called the attribute data, other one is called the variable continuous data. Attribute data could be like 0, 1, pass, fail, alive, dead, black, white. So, it is like a numerical numbers, okay. it could be in counted. 10 defects in 10,000 samples, 10 failures in a class of 100 students. So, you can count it, you can classify it. So, it is based on numerical numbers. So, it is a discrete whereas in variable data, continuous data you can have continuously changing. For example, I can measure temperature of a fermenter continuously. I can call it 26.5 or 26.6, 26.7, 26.8 like that I can measure the temperature very continuously. Similarly, I can measure the pH of the solution in a very continuous manner 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 and so on. So, that is called the continuous data. So, we have the discrete data, we have the continuous data. So, any data type can be divided into these two forms. Now, under this discrete, we can classify it as defective or not. So, especially uh, if you take a factory where they manufacture a lot of products, for example, they are manufacturing screws and they would like to have the screw of 10 mm diameter. So, any screw that is not 10 mm, if it is 9 mm or if it is 11 mm, it is called a defect. So, we can say out of uh, 1 million screws that are manufactured in each week, there could be so many screws, 10 screws which are defective. That means, they do not um, have 10 mm as the diameter, the diameter could be different. Okay? So, that is classifying. So, you have something called the binomial distribution coming into picture. So, there are 10 defective screws out of 1 million screws that are manufactured in this particular week. Then we also have something called Poisson distribution. This is a, again giving a count. Okay, there are 3 road accidents in the city of Chennai um, in a month's time. 
there are four people suffering from HIV uh, in this particular village in South India. So, you are giving some numbers and again um, data the numbers are collected based on large number of samples. Okay. Again it is count that is called poison distribution. Okay. So, we have the binomial distribution um, out of 10,000 samples 10 are defective or we have the poison distribution where I am saying there are 3 deaths uh, per day in the city of Chennai. Then under the continuous data we have the normal distribution you must have all heard of normal or uh, uh, the uniform distribution which looks like a bell type of curve and also we have the Weibull distribution which discusses the uh, life of a say for example a light bulb or a fan or a refrigerator. Okay. So, that is called the Weibull distribution. So, that is continuous data we can measure uh, the data continuously okay. that is called the Weibull distribution. So, we have two types of data the discrete data and the continuous data. So, the discrete data is used for identifying how many defects are there uh, in a sample and uh, how many accidents are happening in Chennai per month or per week uh, and so on. If, okay, whereas, continuous data we are measuring the da data in a very continuous manner. Okay, so, in fact, there are large number of distributions much larger than what I talked about. So, as you can see do not get scared we have normal distribution, we have uniform distribution, then we have T distribution we are going to talk about this, uh, we have F, F distribution we are going to spend some time on this, then chi square distribution we are going to spend some time on this, Weibull distribution okay, uh, and so on actually as you can see these are all continuous distribution, we have fatigue life distribution, gamma distribution, double exponential, power normal, power logarithm. Um, beta distribution and so on. So, a large number of distributions are there, they are used in different scenarios, different requirements, different problems, but uh, I will be spending time on normal, I will be spending time on T distribution, I will be talking about the chi square distribution, F distribution, Weibull distribution, but all these distributions are very useful actually as you can see and they have uh, different shapes and that means uh, the probability of certain event happening will follow different type of relationship or mathematical formula. So, these are all continuous distribution um, in, the bi in the discrete we have the binomial and uh, we have the um, uh, another type of Poisson distribution. Okay. So, these are continuous distribution. So, we I said we will spend time only on few of these not all of them. Okay. Let us take binomial distribution you must have all read in your uh, um, school. Uh, talking about probability tossing a coin tossing a dice and so on actually okay so binomial distribution is based on yes no or zero one success failure pass fail live dead black white or suppose i have a dice um, which has six faces then i am throwing a dice you may get a number one or two or three or four or five or six at equal probability so all these are based on binomial distribution Okay. So, the sampling is carried out without replacement okay. that means you are not putting it back. So, the draws are not independent. Okay. So, binomial distribution um, is a good approximation here. So, if I am tossing a coin probability of a coin showing head could be half probability of coin showing tail could be half. So, if I throw it 10 times the same coin uh, if I want to know what is this probability uh, 4 of them uh, out of this 10 is heads. I can use the binomial distribution okay. or if I am going to say that uh, the um, uh, birth defect of children born in India is 10 percent and I go to a village which has got uh, 1000 children what is the probability that 4 of these children will have that particular defect birth defect then I can use a binomial distribution. So, that way binomial distribution becomes very useful for us to do. So, let us look at a simple problem tossing of a coin. So, I have a coin as you know I can get either heads or tails okay. heads or tails that means equal probability 50 percent probability for heads 50 percent probability for tails. So, I toss the coin 4 times. So, I can get uh, 0 head that means all of them become tail I can get 1 head that means I can get 1 head and 3 tails I can get 2 that means 2 heads and 2 tails I can get 3, 3 heads and 1 tail or 4 heads and no tail. Okay. So, 
all these are possible and the likelihood of getting each one of them is given by this formula 1 by 16, 4 by 16, 6 by 16, 4 by 16, 1 by 16. How do we get this? In the next slide I will show you the formula. Uh, so, this is how the distribution will look like. So, I toss the coin 4 times. So, obviously, getting 2 heads, 2 tails is most probable. How to get this number of 6 by 16? I will tell you in the next slide. And then getting 1 head and 3 tails or getting uh, 3 heads and 1 tail are equally probable which comes second and then getting uh, 0 heads or getting 4 heads again is less probable in this, but they are equal. So, this is how the binomial distribution will look like. Now, what is the formula for calculating this probability? Okay, Let us show it in the next slide. This is how the probability uh, equation looks like. The probability function f k is given by n factorial divided by k factorial multiplied by n minus k factorial p power k 1 minus p power n minus k. So, n trials k successes p is the probability. So, n times you are doing something and k is the successes you are talking about p is the probability. So, in the previous problem like uh, I am tossing the coin uh, 4 times okay, n will be equal to 4. If I want to know uh, uh, what is the probability for 0 heads then k will become 0 and p is half because I can get either head or tail. So, probability is p which is half. Okay. So, p is half n will be 4 and if I want to get a 0 heads what is the probability I want to calculate I will put k as 0. n factorial you all know you must have studied n factorial is nothing but n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 and so on. Okay. So, when I put k equal to 0 I substitute here I will get 4 factorial and the denominator I put 0 factorial then I put 4 minus 0 factorial half raised to the power 0 1 minus half raised to the power 4 minus 0 that is what I have written here. Okay, 0 factorial is 1 4 factorial is 4 into 3 into 2 okay, so that is 24 half raised to the power 0 is uh, 1 1 minus half is half half raised to the power 4 is half of raised to the power 4. So, this is 4 factorial at the denominator. So, these two will cancel, these two will cancel. So, we have half raised to the power 4. So, that means 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 4 times that is 1 by 16. So, if, if you want to see 0 heads when you toss a coin 4 times the probability will be 1 by 16. You see that is what uh, I had mentioned here right 1 by 16. This is how you get the data. Now, if you want to know what is the probability uh, to get 2 heads when I toss the coin 4 times. So, n equal to 4, k equal to 2 and again p will be half. Okay. So, you put 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 4 minus 2 factorial, half raised to the power 2, 1 minus half raised to the power 4 minus 2. Okay. So, you do all these calculations, you end up with 6 by 16. Okay. We I mentioned here 6 by 16 that is the maximum. So, when you toss the coin 4 times what is the probability of getting 2 times head in that 4 is 6 by 16 that is the maximum okay. like that. So, if I want to know uh, with 4 times tossing if k equal to 1 that means uh, 1 head what is the probability of getting 1 head when I toss the coin 4 times I put n equal to 4, uh, but I put k equal to 1 p will be half in all these cases. Okay. So, 0 factorial you should remember is always 1. Okay. So, it is simple to calculate. Okay. Now, you can do the same calculation using uh, Excel as well. Excel has a function okay, called binom distribution. This is the function okay, binom distribution. Um, this there are 3, 4 terms inside this, okay. 4 terms inside it. Number s is the number of trials number of successive successes the trials, trials is the total number and probability s is the probability and cumulative you can say true or false. If it is false it will give you the okay, it gives you the exact number whereas, it, if you put true it gives you a cumulative number. Okay. So, trials is n in the equation 
number s is the success k, probability is your uh, p small p and here we put true or false, if you put false it gives you the exact answer. For example, in the previous problem where we looked at um, 4 times I toss the coin, I want to know 2 successes with heads. So, what will I do? I will put 2 here, I will put 4 here, I will put half here and I can put uh, false here and uh, that will give you the binomial distribution answer. I should get 6 by 16 as my answer. Okay? Let us look at it in the excel as well. Okay? So, this is the function I said, it is called binomial distribution, number s is the number of successes. So, I will put 2 here, number of times I do that is 4 here, probability is uh, half that means I put 0.5 here and uh, if I put false it will give you the um, exact answer whereas when I put true it will give you summation of all the answer. Okay? So, I will put false, so what did I get? I got 0.375, now uh, is it same as 6 by 16? See. So, that is 0.375. So, um, using Excel we can calculate the binomial distribution as you can see this is the equation okay. for example. Um, so, this is the number of successes, this is the number of trials that is this is n, this is uh, k, this is the p and here we put false to get the um, answer here. When you put true it adds up it is a cumulative answer. That means, um, if I put true here, it tells you what is the cumulative probability for getting at least 2 heads out of 4 trials. That means, it will look at 0, it will look at 1, then it will look at 2. So, it will give you the summation of all these 3 things. So, we can use excel also to do the same calculation or we can actually calculate it out also. Okay? So, you understood. So, you have a excel function called binom distribution and uh, there are 4 terms here the trials this is equal to n, this is equal to k, this is equal to p and here you put false to um, get the answer. Now, there are many softwares which can do this job also some of them are commercial there could be something free also in the net and so on. So, I also looked at uh, a software okay? and uh, there is this free online statistical calculator and uh, this is the uh, link for that you know graph pad it is called graph pad software. Okay, it can do lot of uh, nice calculations online we put in some data and it can do some calculations. So, I am going to use this okay, and um, we are going to uh, we can do some of the problems using this. Okay. So, this online software um, as you can see can do lot of calculations it can look at uh, binomial distribution, Poisson distribution, normal distribution, it can look at uh, different types of statistical tests, um, t test, f test and so on. Okay. So, we are we are also going to use this. Uh, so, this is the link to that www.graphpad.com quick calc. So, um, let me show you that here. So, when you do that as you can see here Okay, this is the graph pad quick cal. So, we have uh, the binomial distribution coming into picture. So, we click on it and then we go continue. So, when you can when you continue uh, as you can see here calculate different types of distribution. Let us go to binomial. We will talk about different distribution later. As I said I am going to talk about binomial, I am going to talk about poison, t distribution, um, normal and so on. So, here you have the binomial. So, we say continue. Okay. So, here you have the binomial distribution how many trials? So, we are doing 4 trials, 4 trials what is the probability of success in each trial 0.5 calculate probabilities. So, here you can see it gives you everything. So, number of successes 0 means it gives you 0.25 um, that is 0 heads out of 4 trials the probability is sorry 6.25 and then if you are talking about uh, one success out of one head out of four trials you get uh, 25 percent, but here you gives you the cumulative 6 plus 25 is giving 31. How do you even in excel if we put true as the last term you will get the cumulative whereas, if you put uh, false you will get the exact. So, uh, two trials um, you get 37 percent you can see. So, 0 0.375 
and the cumulative will be some 6 plus 25 plus 37 68 percent. So, 3 successes out of 4 it gives you it is 25 percent cumulative wise it is 93 percent. So, all 4 heads out of 4 trials 100 uh, percent it gives you. So, we can use this um, particular online software also there could be many online softwares, but I am um, looking at this particular online software um, because it looks good and uh, there are many commercial softwares also one can go about using them. So, it depends upon whether you have the availability of these there are um, softwares which may be even freely downloadable, but this is a simple online software where you give the data and it gives you the results. As you can see here um, in our problem uh, we are tossing the coin 4 times and uh, you can get heads or tails with the probability of half. Now, out of this 4 times 0 heads 6 percent 6.25 percent probability out of 4 times 1 head 25 percent probability out of 4 times 2 heads 37.5 percent probability out of 4 heads 3 heads um, 25 percent probability out of 4 trials 4 heads 6.25. So, I, I showed you 3 different ways by which we can calculate this right. So, one is using this equation ok. So, using this equation. So, if the data is very small we can use this and do it that means, if the k n and all is small we can otherwise we can use the excel function which is called binom distribution ok where this is the number of successes that is k number of trials that is n and this is the probability that is in this case half p then here we give false or we can use this free online statistical calculator which I am I showed you. So, we click here and then uh, we give a number of trials as 4 and the probability is half. So, it gives you um, the entire table for 0 success out of 4 what is the probability for 1 success out of 4 what is the probability for 2 success out of 4 what is the probability and for 3 success out of 4 what is the probability and that is what it is giving you here right. So, as you can see. So, it gives you in the entire table. So, I showed you 3 different approaches by which we can do the um, binomial distribution calculation ok. Let us go further let us look at a, bi a biological application and 1 percent of the population is infected with HIV plus I am just giving. So, maybe uh, in, uh, in a country 1 percent of the population is infected. So, there are no obvious symptoms ok um, that can be used to recognize the carrier. So, we assume that if I look at somebody I cannot tell whether uh, the person has HIV or not unless I do a detailed study for example. Um, so, I need to select some people and do a detailed study if the sample size is too small then I might not be able to find uh, at all then if I take a very big sample then I need to do lot of uh, sample collection sample analysis. So, I need to spend lot of money that is also inefficient. So, what do I do? Is it ok if I just take 20 people is this sample adequate will I be able to find at least 1 person in that ok. So, that is a um, problem. So, how do I do using binomial distribution? I can use n equal to 20 I can say k equal to 0 that means I am in that 20 I am not finding anybody with that and p is equal to 0 0.01 because I said 1 percent of the population. So, p is equal to 0 0.01. So, when I put it in binomial distribution 20 factorial ok again this is 20 factorial because k equal to 0 k equal to 0. So, these two will get cancelled out p is equal to 0 0.1 k is equal to 0 this also will get cancelled out. So, 1 minus p is 0 0.99 raised to the power 20 0 0.99 raised to the power 20 gives me 0 0.82. So, what does that mean? There is a 82 percent chance that if I take 20 people uh, I will not even find 1 person with that uh, disease. Did you notice that it is very very um, important finding. So, there is a 1 percent population is infected with HIV, but if I take 20 people randomly there are 82 percent chance that I will not find anybody with that uh, in that in that sample of 20. So, I may say nobody is infected. So, obviously, what does it mean my sample size is too small ok or if I can say n equal to 20 k equal to 1 then I can do the same study and see what is the probability of finding at least 1. So, the, so what it means is when I randomly select 20 people I am not 
uh, able, I will not be able to find even 1 percent with that particular uh, disease. So, I may say that nobody is infected with the, this particular disease. Okay? Now, we can also check with the, the online software also okay? using the same online software. Okay, for example, um, same thing for getting 0, um, it gives you 81 percent or 82 percent. So, if I want to find at least 1 percent with that 98 percent okay, will happen actually. Same thing we can do it uh, using this. Okay. So, what we do? We will go to the um, graph pad and then I go back and I will put um, 20, then I will put uh, 0 0.01, then calculate probability. So, as you can see here there is okay, 81 percent probability or 82 percent probability that not a single number of successes is 0. That means, not a single person with that particular disease I will be able. So, obviously, uh, my data is too little my sample size is too little that I may miss out. Okay? So, you must be very careful um, when you select sample, it, a very small sample um, can make you um, conclude wrongly. Okay? So, that sample size is a very, very important parameter and we are going to talk about that in other cases also as we go along. So, with the very small sample size um, for example, here 20 people uh, with the 1 percent probability I may say that uh, 82 percent of the time there will not be even a single person infected with that disease in the sample of 20. So, you can see that we can show it using this equation or we can go to that uh, software graph pad online and then get the same answer. Okay. Even with the excel also we can do the same thing. So, we go to the excel. Okay. So, we go to excel. Uh, so, we type a binom distribution. So, f x. So, we have binom distribution. So, we have uh, number of uh, successes we are talking about 0, trials is 20, probability is 0 0.01, then we can say false or true, it does not matter, false, then ok. So, we get again uh, you can see the answer is 82 percent. So, 82 percent of the time we will not be finding any infected person if I take a sample of only 20. Okay. So, you have to be very, very careful on that. Okay. 82 percent of the time we will miss out, we will we'll come to a wrong conclusion. Okay, Let us look at another problem. A tranquilizing drug caused anemia in two of the first 10 patients who were tested. Okay. So, I I took 10 patients and then um, I gave the drug first two patient um, had some toxic toxicity problem. But then a true toxicity of this kind is tolerable only if it does not affect more than 10 percent of the treated patient. So, but here the first two patients themselves had the problem. So, should the drug be withdrawn or tested further? Okay. So, only 10 percent uh, of the patients can have this type of uh, toxicity effect, but here with 10 patients 2 of them are having problem. So, should the drug be taken out. Okay. So, we are in a big problem. So, let us uh, go for example, uh, the graph pad, then uh, we will say 10 patient and then we want to say 0 0.1 percent um, calculate probability. Okay. So, that is very, very high. Um, okay. So, we cannot conclude because it is showing almost a very high probability almost 34 percent whereas, we want to have less than uh, we want to have 10 percent only. Okay. Whereas, if I take a larger population for example, if I take a n equal to 40, okay. if I take a larger population for testing and then I keep the same 10 percent when I calculate the probability, okay. then as you can see here. So, here if I 
go to 2, 2 percent successes okay here it is still going to 14 percent probability okay the cumulative uh, if you look at it is coming to again 22 percent whereas if you want to have less than 5 percent as a possible number then obviously if I go to say n equal to 100 okay so if I go to n equal to 100 for example suppose I take a sample of 100 patients and then do this study okay as you can see here out of the 100 patient I can have up to 5 patients having toxicity I will be within that 10 percent limit but if I go beyond that um, I will have uh, numbers going up okay. So, obviously what it means is the number of uh, samples I have taken should be considerably large in order to prove um, that the toxicity is less than 10 percent okay. So, obviously in this particular case also you can see the sampling size uh, has to be much larger okay. Suppose let us look at another problem 30 percent of the students wear glasses okay 30 percent of students wear glasses. So, if I take a random sample of 10 students find the probability the number of students wearing glasses is at most 4 okay at most 4 means um, okay. So, so, people different types you can have uh, people wearing glasses you may get uh, no one we may get uh, 1 person wearing glasses you may get 2 persons wearing glasses you may get all the 4 person wearing glasses right. So, we have a 30 percent of students so here p is equal to 0.3 and then uh, you have uh, um, n is equal to 10 and then you want to look at uh, various conditions of 1 person wearing 2 person wearing 3 person wearing 4 person wearing glasses okay so that will be the k values so we can use um, this particular uh, function or we can even use the um, So, I take a 10 students the probability is um, 0.3. So, I calculate the probabilities so as you can see here uh, 0 percent wearing glasses 1 percent wearing glasses 2 percent 3 percent and so on. So, uh, 0 percent wearing glasses will be 2.82 percent, but if you are talking about uh, 1 percent wearing glasses out of this 10 is 12 percent, uh, 4 percent wearing glasses is uh, 20 percent okay. But if I add up all these that means, uh, if I take 10 students out of this lot um, students wearing 1 or 2 or 3 um, or 4 percent wearing glasses will be so many percent 84 percent okay or 0 glasses. So, this is the cumulative and this is the exact probability here okay. So, you can use this uh, quick uh, calc of the graph pad to identify the probability distribution function for a binomial distribution okay. So, you can uh, use this equation or we can use uh, the excel function or we can use the um, graph pad software also. So, all these are possible to get. So, as you can see here uh, this is the cumulative this is the exact probability for uh, 0 percent wearing glasses, 1 percent wearing glasses, 2 percent, 3 percent, 4 percent like that you know goes up to n of 10. Now, let us look at another problem. Now, there is a disease with known mortality 10 percent. What is the minimum number of patients required to demonstrate the efficacy of the completely curative drug? That means, um, there is a disease of uh, mortality of 10 percent that means 0 0.1 okay. survival if you take as pi 0 0.9 1 minus phi is death is 0 0.1 okay. I want to show completely curative that means I do not want to see any disease okay. So, uh, if I take n patients and survival probability for each of the patient is 0 0.9 so it will become 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 raised to the power n 
Now, this should be less than 0 0.05 because why 0 0.05 is 5 percent that means that gives you 95 percent confidence do you understand. So, this mortality is 10 percent that is 0 0.1. So, survival is 0 0.9 if I call 5 survival as 0 0.9 1 minus 5 death is equal to 0 0.1 ok. Uh, now, if I take n patients then survival for each one is 0 0.9. So, 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 I do it in n times that is why I have 0 0.9 raised to the power n. Now, this should be less than um, to get a confidence of 95 percent this should be less than 0 0.05 ok. So, if I calculate this from this n I get n should be greater than 29 that means I should have at least 29 patients and show on all of them uh, none of them die. If I do that then I have a 95 percent confidence that uh, the drug has a completely curative effect ok. So, this uh, approach tells you how to select the number of uh, subjects or number of samples in the in our problem ok ok. So, um, we looked at uh, many different uh, cases where we use binomial distribution and binomial distribution is based on successes when you take a sample of n. So, k successes in a sample of n um, and the probability of each one happening p it tells you what is the probability of k successes in a sample of n if the probability for each event is p and that is what is binomial distribution is all about. Um, so, we can use it like if uh, there are 30 percent of the students have wear glasses in a class if I take 10 students what is the probability that uh, 4 of them will be having glasses. If I have a um, disease which happens uh, 2 percent in India if I take a family of uh, 20 people in a house how many of them will have this particular disease. Uh, so, for all these we use this binomial distribution very effectively and uh, it is very very useful. I also taught you how to use the binomial distribution using the formula n factorial divided by uh, k factorial n minus k factorial and then numerator p raised to the power k then 1 minus p raised to the power n minus k. So, we can do it uh, numerically or we can use the excel uh, all of us have excel there is a function called binomial distribution in the excel uh, where you can substitute and calculate or you can use an online um, software called graph pad I showed you the link to the software you can substitute the data and get the um, values. So, all these approaches are possible and you can see binomial distribution is very very useful in clinical trials and uh, um, large data analysis ok. The next class we will look at uh, something called the Poisson distribution again this is a discrete distribution which talks about uh, um, events again Poisson is an extension of binomial distribution ok. Thank you very much.